Okay, awesome, awesome. Everything looks absolutely clear. Uh, so where to start? Let's start from the very beginning. When to start development? Uh, the main problem here is uh, some obvious thing that all startups think about that. I need to create some MVP and after that I will go to the market, I will get uh, billions of investment, etc, etc. And uh, a lot of startups in the very beginning of their way, uh, due to a lot of efforts to develop their MVP, uh, they are going to, through the wrong way, but they don't know that. They are so absolutely sure in their idea, they are so absolutely self-confident that it's the best idea ever and it should be done only in this type of way that they even doesn't possibly think that it couldn't work, it should be working in certain another way, etc. So they just starting according of their MVP and uh, then without them they go to the market. They wasting a lot of time, a lot of resources, and uh, when they go to the market, they're, whoops, no one has think about that, they uh, doesn't work, the product should be go to absolutely another way, and then just to make those changes, a lot of uh, startups owner just uh, hands go down. Oh, I put so many efforts, so many money, so many much time. I wouldn't proceed with that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, don't think that you should already have some MVP, and only after that you go to the market. No, pretty enough. Just some general idea how everything should work. Make some briefly pitch and start going to all events, to all pictures, presentation, send to everyone. If you think that there is only one first impression and there would be no another chance to go to the market, it's wrong. Market is huge. There is so huge amount of uh, different conferences, etc. that it's absolutely no problem. More of that, if you go to each conference again, again, and again, then everyone will recognize you and know about you. Uh, some practical use cases regarding that. Uh, I don't know, maybe half of my startups that uh, were going to the market after they developed the MVP, they absolutely changed everything. Even my last own project that uh, was really successful will bring a million of dollars in the first version. It compares the first version of this product and what is really now in this very moment, it's absolutely another project. Absolutely everything is another only the same direction and that's it. So from very beginning, if you are going to think when it's time to develop an MVP, after market confirm that it's a good idea and everything goes on the right way. So firstly, put pitch deck, go to five, seven conferences, pitch to few angels, pitch to few founds, uh, go to some open mics, etc. and only when uh, big range of people will confirm your idea, give you some feedbacks, only after that you can develop the MVP. And I absolutely guarantee you that you will get a lot of comments after that, your idea how the MVP should looks like will be absolutely in different way. So don't hesitate to get some feedbacks from the market and start development only when you are already checked and super sure how it should be. Only after feedback from the market, only after feedback from uh, some potential investors, etc. Without it, don't start development. You can lost a lot of time and resources. Now let's go a little bit close to what exactly to outsource. So I already have some market proof, I have some positive comments, I visited a few conferences, they told me, okay, you're on the right way, a few comments how to change something, and I'm ready to start of source. Uh, and I have enough decisions this very moment, what should I do? Uh, should I do it by my own developers, or should I source someone, etc.? Of course, from the very, very beginning, if you are trying to get some in-house developers, there is a lot of problems with that because uh, they are not so much uh, responsible as uh, 
from company side because if you take some personalities it's personality it's a single developer that can in any time told you know it's not interested for me you know google just call me and tell hey i have a job for you for twenty thousand dollars per month i go to another job etc if you are cooperating with some company fully source your development then this company absolutely responsible for the final result they will do everything really good and that's why when you are very starting to have a lot of risks connected to the people it's not the best idea so it's very good option to outsource this development and outsource to professionals and uh, this outsourcing really bring a lot of positive because more of that uh, if you outsource from some IT company who have already experience in this direction, then you get not only some developers that are bringing you some code, you get some expertise and they can tell you how to move to the right way, to the right direction, etc. They even can help with speech deck, with some other nuances, with a roadmap, etc. That's why you don't outsource a guy who will make some code. You outsource a group of professionals that will help you from a lot of another direction. And the question, what exactly to outsource? Uh, development of some functionality, design, some another part, because all times there is a lot of these questions like, hmm, I have a lot of comments regarding how I see the design of my application, so better I would take some in-house designer, he will draw me all screens how I wanna, and after that I will source only development. Or from another hand, uh, I would like to source the design and uh, developers I would like to hire uh, in-house. So a lot of different uh, point of uh, view regarding that. But if to be maximum honest with you, it's better to outsource everything from one place. Then you will be absolutely confident in responsibility from those side. Because whole time in outsourcing, the main problem uh, when you have a few vendors from different directions, they like to put fingers to each other. It's your responsibility, your, your, it's your fault, etc. And when you tell, hey, what is this design? I was waiting so long. You told me one week and I'm waiting already for one month. Because we were waiting from uh, developers, they should provide some comments, etc developers why well, i haven't finished ah because another team making uh testing all the solution and they still haven't provided us result etc so a lot of nuances conflicts during a source process if you outsource into few companies absolutely there can be some moments where you find a super cool design company that are really awesome but they don't develop and you find a perfect development team, they don't do design, and you think that those two items are not connected with themselves. But in the very last moment, or we haven't thought that for our functionality, we need to draw some another screen, how it works, please go to designer, or designer draw something that is not very good for development. Again, conflicts, pointing fingers to each other. So if you wanted to be sure that the part to whom you put outsourcing will be fully responsible and no way out to say it's not my fault. So everything should be outsourced only to one person, only to one company, and they should have full responsibility regarding all this stuff. Uh, let's go next. Um, how to choose a contractor. It's the most simpler <laughs> item I think here. Uh, in true, experience of this contractor and it should be especially experience in working with startups and perfectly if have experience in working with your domain why is critical to have experience working with startups i had a lot of use cases when startups found some huge international company more than one 
thousand, hundred thousands engineers that uh, have coded a lot of international projects and it's the best company ever to code, but no experience working with startups. They don't know some specifics that there should be some moments when you critically need in some very moment to add some functionality, to change your roadmap in the middle of roadmap, uh, to bring some new features, to bring some additional comments, etc. So your contractor should have in his portfolio at least seven, ten startups with uh, which he worked. And a second one, expertise in your direction. Because you can find someone who is working with startups, but only in a few directions and wasn't working in your direction. So it's a huge plus that he's experienced in uh, working with startups, but Dominant, dominant direction it's really matter if they had another project in healthcare and your project is healthcare then definitely they can make a lot of comments for you how to make it uh, working properly to be it uh, absolutely in the right direction they provide a lot of comments about the logic because they had some similar project in this direction so doesn't matter what is the size of the company, in what country it's located, uh, not another some stuff. The main point here uh, is portfolio. And in this portfolio should be startups and perfectly startups from your area. So don't hesitate to search more and more companies, try to find them in different resources because it can be the best company ever, but without working in startups, it will be a huge problem. So find those one who is focused on working with startups and you will get your perfect match, uh, perfect development, a lot of comments how to make everything even better. So it's the main point here. Uh, now let's go to secret sauce of successful cooperation. And I think it's really connected with typical mistakes in the cooperation. Uh, so I would a little bit mix those items. Mm, first of all, it's uh, your technical vision, technical documentation, how everything should be done, how everything should work. It's very important here. and. All startups that I have experienced work with, they just came and tell, sorry, I have no time for bringing technical requirements. Here's high-level idea. Just shut up, take our money and start to cut everything for us because we know that we have only one month to create MVP. After that, some another company can go to the market. We need to start us up, etc. And cause of that is a lot of uh, miscommunication, a lot of uh, items that uh, wouldn't be done and both parties would be unsatisfied with each other, you will get a uh, wrong code, etc. So if you're ready to start development, first and the main point here to write technical requirements, they should be detailed with high-level wireframes, with uh, described functionality, how it should work, etc. Never start with, here is high-level idea, start code. Always there should be a detailed technical requirements first. Second one, it's very obvious thing, but whole time when you struggle with MVP, you try to put a lot of functionality there. MVP should be really MVP. It should be from first letter, minimal, minimal. You should put there as minimum functionality as you just can. And I would just, it will be funny, but example, it was eight years ago, one of first startup with which I started to work. Uh, they wanted to create another version of Facebook, bigger, faster, cooler. They had a lot of money. They had an awesome idea. And they definitely had all opportunities to become a better Facebook and leave this Facebook very far, far away and be you now number one social network in the world. But what the situation was, mm, we have three items that are perfect for us, but we want to add this, this, this item more, to add a few more features, etc. And development of their MVP 
took two years, two years without developing the MVP for them. And after two years, the main person in this company, it was three months before the launch of MVP, told, hmm, you know, I'm, I'm not more interested in that. I want to now go to absolutely another business. And uh, this startup haven't started at all. A lot of another cases I have when uh, the startup owner starting to develop more and more features and then in one moment they realize they are out of money for another development, no money for marketing, even for visiting uh, some potential angel. Uh, when they were trying to create some little, little feature and this little feature take additional months and some another company enters the market. So very important here, really to be minimalistic. Try to make it as minimum as possible. Uh, one of best cases, for example, uh, we had uh, one platform that had some functionality, but uh, to see this functionality, you know, you need to log into the system. And uh, there was uh, confirmation that you are a real person, confirmation with some identity data that were automatically proceeded. And we were not coding this full login or registration system. It was just clickable prototype. And when you enter inside, then you see the main feature of the product. So we even skip uh, coding login system. And every startup, especially SaaS startup, starting from let's code how you create your own profile, because you get a base of users that log in. So start from coding login. No, no, no. Just put one main feature which brings some profit to your user, and that's it. It's your real MVP. Everything else doesn't matter. So very important point here typical mistakes and in the same time secret sauce mvp should be really mvp cut off everything that you can just super super minimalistic after you put it to the market after you got the first feedback okay you have your right for roadmap first second third four five 15 version no problem at all but mvp should be really so minimal as it is uh, okay, what else I can add here? Uh, what also typical mistakes? Uh, it's um, changing your roadmap on the way. Of course, you already start presenting your solution uh, to some funds, to some potential investors, to the market. You got some first feedback and you understand in this very moment that, okay, we were doing this feature, but need we now very in this moment change everything to another direction to create something in another one. But if you started all these changes of your roadmap, etc., then and especially a sub always we need to do it for yesterday uh, developers are such kind of person that they are trying your best to satisfy you but uh, they in their mind already have some direction how it should be and all these changes can broke something can make something working in uh, not fully properly change timelines but you will know the timelines were changed only after they are changed that's why it's uh, pretty hard to uh, then to get uh, everything in one place that's why try don't change your roadmap very fast with a lot of items just give your developers to finish what should be done to put it on the market and then by another sprint to do all needed changes and especially again going to my previous item mvp super minimalistic and it will be awesome and no more comments will will be sent to there uh, also very widespread uh, problem it's uh, thinking that uh, you know everything better than everyone other because your product is the best one and especially it connect design part sorry but if those designers create more than 100 projects and those projects are awesome successful and uh, a lot of likes on the market then don't think that you with your point of view uh, better than they they know their job so if you wanted to get successful mvp just let professionals to do that 
and professionals will do everything in this way that it should be done perfectly. So just let them do all the stuff. Uh, let's switch uh, to next point. It's when go to own developers. Uh, it's important question here. Mm, try to do that as late as possible and the better after you already have done MVP and created a second, third version, you deployed it, everything works, so you have already traction, etc. cetera. Uh, you should try to bring your own developers maximum later. I know that after you put it MVP, you think, okay, I paid them this amount of money. Oh, it's so many. I want to just uh, have not so much spending. Let's uh, from our, after MVP, put our in-house developers, but those teams that created MVP perfectly know how everything work. And after first feedback from the market, after you realize how the first version should be changed in another direction, uh, they can do it quickly and professionally. So no time wasting for onboarding, for understanding how everything work, uh, to thinking how to code it better. So try to live with your outsourced company as long as is possible. And the main trigger here, when you will be ready to switch to inside developers, when you have a stable roadmap for more than six months and you are absolutely sure in this roadmap and you there is no option that the development can stop. Because if development stops, that means that you have developers that not sure what they to do, but you should pay them salary, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So roadmap for six months already launched MVP and some another first, second version. And it's that moment when you can uh, start to involve uh, in-house developers. And also it's very important knowledge transfer stage. That's why don't cut all developers in one moment, just smoothly. Firstly, one, two developer, just they have a possibility to cooperate with the whole team. But again, conflict that I told before, they can point finger to each other. That's why this knowledge transfer phrase should be one month, no longer. So smoothly start uh, in uh, one month to bring member by member to your team and after knowledge transfer you can just uh, start using your own developers but you should realize that there should be roadmap for six months and you should be fully confident that uh, there will be no stoppers in the work and the seven item for today how to plan scaling very important issue in startups it's absolutely not working at all because uh, a whole time after each conference, after each pitch uh, to potential angel, you have another point of view, what will be the direction of your startup, what to put uh, to another milestone, how to proceed with something, etc. So everything can be changed. That's why it's pretty hard uh, to plan scaling, but you should plan scaling not from point of view of development because it's the main problem uh, of all startups they are focused on development they think that development is the main goal and we should concentrate on that in true development I mean only few percentage from the startups the main point is uh, marketing communication salesman etc 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 so when you realize that your MVP is ready to the market, is started to go into the market, you have positive feedback, you understand that you will proceed on this way and everything is absolutely right in the right direction, then you can start thinking about uh, that how you will scale, but in not development side, but from your team. Okay. I need a salesman. It should be some awesome guy. He should work one month, provide some first result. After that, I can hire two more salesmen um, and that are junior, but those senior will help them to work on the right way. I should have a marketing. I should have advertisement. I should have some additional position in my startups that help me develop. I should hire some support. And 
try from very beginning of yours this road of adding additional people, not development side, how it should work in one year. Because from very beginning, because there was a lot of issues like we need to put some phone in our support and everyone will call this phone. But think on the future would be a lot of calls or not a lot. Maybe to start with uh, not some simple SIM card from uh, our phone, but with some CRM systems that will automatically uh, put uh, your all calls to one place to storage to understand who calls why calls etc if you want to work in the sales also think not to let's start from google sheet and then maybe go to some crm from very beginning start to using some crm to understand is it suitable for you or not to have enough time to change it etc so when you are uh, considering how to scale up your startup uh, you should be really understand how it should work in one year when it will uh, just be in some level and uh, don't make some grounds error just from very beginning try to make it uh, on the right way and then when time will came to make it uh, much more higher cooler then you'll be absolutely ready for that uh, okay i briefly go through all my points here I have a lot of uh, items more to tell you, but uh, I think that it will be uh, much more productive uh, to jump and take more time to our QA session. So I'm open to your questions and we'll be happy to answer them. How's it going? Thank you so much for that and your time. and. <laughs> That was a lot of information, but that was super insightful. So uh, I definitely got a lot of value from it. I appreciate that. Um, let's uh, open up the floor a little bit for several questions before you know uh, we move on to the next speaker. So if you have a question, um, please drop it in the in the chat. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, how can people connect with you? Um, is it via LinkedIn, Twitter? Are you online? Uh, what? What's your current status as far as uh, connecting with people over digital? I'm always open to any connection. I really like uh, to communicate with startups. When someone came to me and, hello, we are on the very beginning of the, of our route, uh, what we should do, uh, I will be always happy to assist, to provide some comments, etc. because I like networking networking for me is something awesome stuff and always when you try to help someone you just uh, realize for yourself how to make something in another way in your own product etc so i like networking always open for that and you can reach me anyway linkedin any another source doesn't matter i'm always open to, to write back and to jump into conversation so while we wait, you know, I, I, I feel you on that. I'm the same exact way. You know, I, I, you know, unfortunately, it's gotten to the point where, like, especially on LinkedIn, I get a lot of automated, like, requests. And to be honest, like, if someone's going to take the time out of the data, like, send me a request, and I'm going to take the time to, like, at least let them know, like, whether I want to accept them or not. And what I mean by that is, like, I mean, you can obviously tell who are there for, like, you know, business development purposes and, you know, prospecting and whatnot. And like, that's cool. And I respect the hustle, but like, I really don't want to get spammed because you're not the only one. There's like 138 other ones waiting for me yeah. uh, to, to say the same thing too. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's sometimes you just get to the point where you're just like, Oh my goodness. Right. And you just want to be like, just stop messaging me, but you know, being polite and just saying, no, thanks. Don't have the bandwidth. Uh, but something to take from that, is that I love, so I host startup events across the country. Um, I did it with Cam for the last 18 months. And now, you know, I'm doing more virtual stuff. This is my sixth time doing with Florian Technologies hosting their, their summit. And to me, it's really interesting because, you know, we have a very diverse group of speakers that are coming to join us and everyone has a different background. So like for me at the end of the day, just like how can I make sure that like I make a positive influence with the people that are joining us, the attendees, but also like the speakers and you know connecting with them offline is something that you know i've definitely taken advantage of and like a lot of really interesting things are happening and have happened from that so if i can share like one helpful tactic um when prospecting at least from my perspective is like just for better lack of terms to shoot your shot right i mean like literally like 
if you want something like, you know, DM them, you know, ask them, right. But offer it in a way that you're adding value to them and it's mutually beneficial. Um, otherwise, you know, most people are very busy and don't have the time. So if you can make it something that's obviously enticing for them, because, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but, uh, because I get to go to all these different cities and host these events, it's really interesting to me how, you know, um, every startup ecosystem is so different. You know, I was just in LA, I live in Dallas, two completely different ecosystems, right? So as we move into 2023 here in the next couple of months, like what advice do you have for founders as, as we start to go through this quote unquote, like recession, like I'm a very tactical person. So from like a very tactical perspective, like, what's that one piece of advice that like, you know, you would tell your like 21 year old self, you know, with the knowledge that you have today? Yeah, really. Um, by the way, you had on the very beginning, I just uh, remember quick wage growth hunter. What is that? <laughs> it's some uh, slang word. It's uh, connected like hunting for growth. Uh, the main goal of this person is uh, helping uh, to grow because for example i don't know um mighty company we have uh, 20 engineers we are thinking how to become a company with 100 engineers but we don't know how and then gross counter came and hmm, let's go to this market bring this client bring those guys and it's a goal to help to grow that's interesting so it's funny because uh like so i came up <clears throat> excuse me i came up with like my persona of what a growth hunter is like in my eyes prior to like having this conversation and like to me i call it a growth and this might be a little you know pg-13 radar but like a growth digger you know and i just that's kind of like the terminology that i came up with you know and it's just like someone who's constantly just digging for growth right and you're just like no matter what you're constantly improving it's a work in progress you're constantly evolving you know so um you know that's when you know that you're growing once that stops you you might be in trouble a little bit so as we have a minute left, you know, what, uh, what parting piece of advice do you have for, for everyone joining us? You know, thank you so much for joining us again. And I wish you, your family to stay safe and healthy during these times, but what would you like to leave everyone with? Uh, yeah, the main things that I would like to get like a message to everyone who is starting their way in startups, uh, don't waste your time. Start now. Because a lot of cases when I need to describe my idea in more details, I need to create a perfect pitch deck, I need to create something, blah, blah, blah. Or oh, the main problem also, I need to create an LLC. Without LLC, I couldn't go to the market. What? So don't waste your time. Do today something for your startup not uh, inside uh, yourself go to any i don't know conference to anything just came to anyone who was a speaker speak with someone share your idea as maximum as possible and doesn't matter that you have no pitch decks and you have not detailed the script uh, how your startup should work what you just have elevator pitch 30 seconds without any slides, anything. So just have the 30 second speech, go to as much person as you have already today, bring feedback already today. And then when the time will came to create a pitch deck, some another point, you will have already a really good essential feedback from the market. So start doing your startup today. Thanks. And always happy to assist feel free to write me in LinkedIn. I will be all, always happy to help everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much again for joining us. And if you don't mind, if you want to drop your LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever handles you want in the chat so everyone can connect with you um, and, you know, kind of connect everyone together. So thank you again for joining us. We're going to move on to our next speaker. So have a great day. Thanks. See you.